Thank you, uh, Vanya. I hope everyone is hearing me, hearing me well. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today Hadi Haidari to present uh, um, his work in uh, magnetic sensors for biomedical microsystems. I think it's going to be a really nice bridge with a lot of work that we do. So I'm looking very forward for this presentation. And our speaker today is uh, an associated professor uh, in the James Watt School of Engineering at University of Glasgow. Uh, in his microelectronics lab with the, the, the short name MILAV that you can follow on Twitter, for example, uh, he has his team and he conducts pioneering research on magnetoelectronics and integrated microelectronics designs for wearable and implantable devices. He's also a member of several IEEE uh, societies and associated editor of uh, uh, a large number of uh, journals uh, within um, the, magnet, the microelectronics area. So without further ado, and I think we already have given the five academic minutes, I will give not the floor, but the Zoom to Hadi. So please feel free to go forward with your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Diana and Vanya for um, introduction. So uh, first of all, thank you very much everyone. Um, and thank you uh, Inesk for inviting me and having me today. Um, so pleasure to giving you uh, this talk today. So uh, first of all, I'm from a University of Glasgow. So greetings from Scotland. So no weather is Actually, it's quite cold, but we have a sunny. Uh, we have a sunny actually day today, so full of snow, but sunny. So it is good. You can see. Just check my uh, screen that you can see if someone can confirm. Okay, perfect. So today uh, presentation, uh, I'm here to present my mm, seminar on uh, magnetic sensors for biomedical uh, microsystems. So. Um, this is, of course, I should I should mention this is the work of my group members. Um, uh, in fact, actually, the student PhD students and RAs who are working on the this topic. So um, about University of Glasgow, University of Glasgow, just give acknowledge. Uh, you know where I'm uh, working now, founded in 1451, is the fourth oldest university in English speaking board uh, in the top 1% of the world universities, 69th in the QS world ranking. And we had a uh, notable alumni like Adam Smith, Lord Kelvin, James Watt. And also we had, we have seven um, Nobel uh, laureates and also uh, we have an alumni like UK prime minister or current uh, Nicolai Sturgeon, current first minister of Scotland. So um, our lab, our school, in fact, we have a, at our school, we have a James Watt Nanofabrication Center or JWNC. So this is the uh, 1400 um, square meter clean room run as a pseudo industrial operation. So we have a large number of the process modules, micro nanofabrications, and uh, it is actually commercially accessible using the Kelvin nanotechnology, KNT uh, is a, is a spin-out from a university. So uh, we are actually second highest uh, triply department after Cambridge with portfolio, grant portfolio of the 54 million, uh, actually, so this is the all active. So uh, about prototyping facility, uh, so the JWNC is a, a small, is a world best uh, in, in terms of the smallest electron beam lithography pattern, uh, best layer to layer alignment accuracy, smallest diamond transistors, and you know, some more activity. Um, so now uh, about the talk, I want to start the talk by uh, our vision. So our research vision is to create uh, next generation magnetic systems that are smaller, less expensive, 
compared to the current uh, technologies. So if, you, if we look at the uh, current state of the art, we can see that in our hospitals, there are an NMR machine nuclear magnetic resonance, there are a, a magnetomyography, there are a, a MEG and so forth. So our, our work is we are trying to make them a handheld, portable, implantables and wearable. So this is the, our vision that uh, you know, we can mention. If we look at the magnetic biosystems, so um, we can actually, so our body generally, it is a generating a magnetic field in range of the peak potential that is heart or muscle, or goes down to the femtotesla that brain or nerves. So this is the, um, we had a, a, you know, last year we had a, a study that published, uh, you know, here, my students seeming. Uh, so we classified the different type of uh, them and, comp and, you know, made a perspective for the uh, detection on all of them associated with the challenges that we have. So why such technology that, you know, such signals that, you know, has been, um, has been, you know, realized. So the science knows this kind of, uh, this kind of by signals, magnetic by signals for more than uh, half a century. But the problem is why still we cannot uh, build a magnetic systems that can detect them. So, uh, what is the barriers? What is the uh, the problems that still uh, we couldn't go ahead with the uh, muscle, act, uh, muscle uh, you know measurements or brain or heart? So we had a lot of progress with the with the electrical biosignals or with the other you know other type of biosignals, but magnetic biosignals has been um, actually challenge uh, challenging by some. Um, uh, some uh, uh, problem actually. So especially, especially in terms of the technology. So different type of the magnetic sensors exist: magnetoelectrics, flux gate, GMR giant magneto. Uh, sorry, GMI giant magneto impedance or OPM that recently optically pump magnetometers that uh, recently they uh, you know uh, they they showed to be used as a variable MEG. Or uh, and also the one of the most important about the magneto resistance that um, actually uh, the uh, your group is uh, in Lisbon is one of the pioneer in the world. So um, as I said, if we look at the squid super uh, you know superconductive uh, super uh, uh, superconductive quantum actually technologies that we have so they are very big they are very uh, very uh, um, actually uh, quite bulky and we can see that for example you know in 1970s uh, it was published for the detection of the magnetic field from muscle but uh, there are the technologies that you know that should be progressed towards the opm that just a couple of years ago uh, has been um, used for the MEG technologies. And at the end, you know, so this is the technology that has been too uh, miniaturized for to being in future to be implantables, to be wearables, and even, you know, for example, the uh, flexible to be used for the uh, technologies that can be. Uh, actually uh, exploited for the healthcare uh, technologies. So our aim is to uh, detect the sub Tesla magnetic fields generally. So this is a different, uh, you know, um, system we have. So one terms is a device or we have a magnetic sensors. And then also these sensors, we have a process, we, it needs processing. So that processing is normally is uh, CMOS circuits, 
which is the amplifying the amplifier for the amplifying the signal in, in and filter that these two will help to improve the signal to noise ratio. Of course, we need a power management and communication units that can communicate with the uh, with the external uh, and physical board. So challenges, actually, we have a three main challenges I could, you know, say. So we have a amplification, cancellation, you know, we have to cancel uh, uh, noise cancellation, we have to cancel the noises that uh, in different, uh, you know, in different type of applications, they are different, like thermal, flicker noise, movement artifacts, or more important than everything is the Earth's magnetic field, because it's a quite big Earth's magnetic field, around 50 microtesla. So compare with the Pico or Femto uh, Pico Tesla, that is quite big. And then power and communications are uh, the other type of challenges. So our aim, our approach is to have both of them together. So this is the, uh, from the device. So this needs a lot of multidisciplinary research from very basic physics to come to the electronics and uh, of course, manufacturing, fabrication skills and integration system integration. So um, our group uh, have been uh, have been used, uh, developed the different type of the sensor, uh, the magnetic sensors, uh, specifically uh, to be integrated with the uh, CMOS chip. So, or they can be uh, monolithically, or they can be, you know, on the uh, difference on the hetero structure. So uh, we have developed the Hall sensors or NMR sensors or um, even uh, the uh, some other uh, sensor interfaces. And this is the INL. Uh, so we will explain about the uh, INL TM TMR effect sensors that we will explain here. So our main aim is to um, actually, we have a two kind of applications for them. So one is a, human machine interfaces like the magnetomyography that we will explain that is is a, one of the uh, our main applications and then uh, we are using the point of care diagnostics you know for the portable and handheld devices that can be used for the uh, for the uh, rapid diagnostics tests first I would like to start from the CMOS Hall effect sensors. So about the Hall sensors, in this work actually, um, what we, uh, we realized the sensors in the CMOS, in the CMOS uh, structure. So we used the standard CMOS technology. So it was a point, point 0.18 um, uh, TSMC technology. And uh, so as you can see, this is the, uh, microphotograph, so the sensors are here, but the main um, novelty here, so it was to working on the readout circuit to get the, to amplify even the very small uh, current, uh, you know, the current at the output of the sensors to uh, increase that current. So we used the current spinning technique, so which was the um, technique that we have used for the, so uh, we, uh, uh, in the different, so we defined different uh, four phases and in, in each phase we had a, a 90 degree rotation. So in that case, by averaging them, we could cancel the, uh, the noises such as the flicker and also the DC output, um, uh, DC offset of the uh, output of the sensors. So this is the whole sensors. However, the sensitivity still is a challenging because it was a cheap, it was a low cost, but we have used this one for the, one of the technologies, one of the uh, applications in automotive by ST Microelectronics. Um, the second actually uh, work I would like to present here, it, it is about the micro NMR. So the, idea here is to 
developing the a nuclear magnetic res uh, resonance that can generate a, uh, that can generate a signals to excite to uh, the nuclei of the samples. So we had a you know different type of samples like DNA or other type of the uh, the biological targets that can excite them. And then, you know, by relaxation techniques that, you know, we just turn off the, uh, the, trans, uh, the, uh, the transmitter pulses and we get the T2 over the, you know, receiver. So this work also was the, we used the, another technology. It was a CMOS, uh, uh, it was a CMOS standard technology. You see the, the coil here. Actually, it's my background also. So uh, the micro NMR coil, it is here. Um, so it was a, a very big uh, coil. Here, um, as you can see, it is the NMR transceiver. So uh, the frequency was about the 90, uh, sorry, 20 megahertz. And uh, the magnetic field that was generated by a constant uh, magnet here. So it was around half a Tesla, so 470 milli Tesla. Here also we use the hull sensors. So the different type of hull sensors that we called it vertical hull sensors for the uh, monitoring the magnetic field inside the uh, inside the, this magnet actually. So uh, this was the whole experimental uh, setup that you can see uh, the all the whole weight. Uh, it is 1.4 kilograms with the very small dimensions and it, uh, it's uh, handheld. So uh, this figure actually shows the, uh, the circuit block diagram. As you can see, the, this is the type uh, of the vertical hull sensors. So the magnetic field um, is in, the, uh, in line with the, this kind of uh, sensors. So they can actually, we, uh, they, they are monitoring the magnetic field. And this magnetic field will control, actually, as you can see, the B field. So they will uh, calibrate the, uh, the, our magnets. On the other side, we have a transceiver here. So this is the, tra uh, this, uh, this is the uh, tra uh, transmitter. And here is a receiver for, send, uh, for the, uh, sending the, uh, the pulse and then receiving the pulse. So we had also, we use the BJT temperature sensors. So they are uh, monitoring the temperature on the uh, you know on the coil inside the inside the magnet. So this was the work that uh, we have done a uh, few uh, three four years ago. So another um, um, the, uh, another uh, 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 sensors that uh, of course the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the actually. Uh, uh, Susanna and uh, her team, uh, you know, they are very expert on that, uh, or magneto resistive. So we have done uh, the, we have used the GMR and the TMR sensors. So I just simply, you know, I, I present for all of them, all of the people. So I, I'm trying to uh, be very, actually, I'm not physicist. So I'm trying to be a very, actually, uh, 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 just uh, you know, uh, just show the how how it works. So it is uh, three layers of the uh, the pin film, and then also the sensing uh, layer that we have. So um, in that in in this technology, actually, so we have if the if if we have a if we have a sim if we have a same directions on the free layer and pin layer so the the resistance are very low however if they are uh, if the top layer is changing so in the anti parallel we have a very high resistance so the uh, the actually the magneto resistance can be uh, measured as a resistance between anti parallel and uh, parallel so divided by the uh, the bias point resistance actually here. So this work actually we uh, presented the first time for the uh, detection of the paramagnetic particles. So we use the uh, just the commercial uh, GMR sensors. So uh, this work, uh, you know, it was the very uh, very basic samples using the paramagnetic particle uh, particle detection. So. 
when we presented this word, actually, um, we received a very good feedback uh, from the our our medical school. So uh, our uh, medical school in uh, from Glasgow Institute of the Biodiversity, Animal Health, and uh, Comparative Medicine with uh, one company from Africa, actually. So Mati Babu is a is a SME in in Uganda in Uganda. So they had a problem with their um, with their sensors. So their sensors, actually, they were using the light and magnetism, both. So um, through a grant that uh, we were lucky to, uh, go, uh, to get a Wellcome Trust grant, and uh, we uh, proved that using the only magnetic, so we can actually detect the parasite inside the, uh, 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 the paramagnetic particles that exist in the uh, parasites that they are in a malaria, uh, malaria blood cells, okay? So this is the, um, we have done some, you know, very preliminary results and we are going to, uh, you know, uh, one, one level um, higher. So currently a couple of my PhD students, they are working on that. And um, here, as you can see the, the console simulations for uh, for the, this idea. Then after that, we uh, we have also moved this because of the sensitivity. We have moved uh, from GMR to TMR, so to the tunneling magneto resistor. So I will quickly show here. So in the TMR, in fact what uh, we could see that, uh, so here is the vision of the, how it can, uh, the TMR can detect the hemozoin and the parasites from the uh, malaria that is, is a, a infected red blood cell, in fact. So you can see that this is the, uh, here is a healthy red blood cell and this is the infected uh, red blood cell. So. Again, the, the, uh, I, I'm not going deep to the TMR principle. Um, so uh, we have a three layers again, three layer uh, barriers and pin layers. And uh, the, uh, the structure is similar to the GMR, the previous work. However, you know, uh, this is the, uh, in this technology, we are using the, again, the commercial, uh, commercial TMR, but in future we are, we, we plan to, uh, um, to use the other TMR sensors that uh, we are doing, uh, you know, with INL, uh, collaboration with INL. So um, here shows the, uh, he, uh, for, for uh, the one of the challenges in this uh, technology for the malaria detection, in fact, was the, uh, was the, uh, in, uh, in fact, the magnetic uh, actually uh, stimulations of the of the uh, samples. So for this, we had a problem to find a um, a Helmholtz coil that generate one Tesla magnetic field. So here shows the uh, what uh, how how TM how TMR sensors and. Uh, they are uh, interfacing with the trans impedance amplifier, and then we have a filter, and then at the end we have an ADC. So uh, we have used a, a whole Bach array here to generate a, a homogeneous one Tesla magnetic field to excite the, uh, to excite the, uh, uh, in fact, the, the, molar, the blood cells. So that's included the, the hemozoin. So here is the first, actually, uh, so this work is, a, a, we are, we are uh, you know, just started about this work and uh, we, uh, we, will, we, uh, we hope that we can do, we can finish the work by end of this year, hopefully uh, as an integrated circuit. So um, in collaboration with uh, University of Stuttgart also, we tested these sensors with a integrated uh, readout circuit. So this readout circuit, in fact, uh, uh, we uh, we fabricated in a in a 
a, uh, in a 180 nanometer uh, CMOS technology. So uh, they are interfacing the, the readout, uh, they are readout the output of the sensors. So the complete, actually the complete, um, you know, sensor system, they are uh, including the TMR sensors and also uh, we have a, the, this chip that include the 10-bit DAC and also FDDA that we have. So you can see the, uh, the uh, we, we actually achieved the uh, noise, noise floor of the 120 pico, uh, pico Tesla over the square root hertz. Um, and uh, as I said, the microsystem also features a 10-bit on-chip uh, current DAC, digital analog converter, that uh, um, allows uh, compensating for the large process variation in the TMR-based resistant value that, for example, uh, we have. So uh, this was about the point of care diagnostics and how uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can use the magnetic sensors for the point of care diagnostics, but no, we are going to uh, towards the implantable. So we want to use them, uh, the magnetic sensors for implantables and wearable technologies. Um, this is the uh, one of the work that we uh, started uh, with University of Edinburgh and Imperial College London. So it's called implantable myography. So in fact, myography means that uh, we can measure uh, the magnetic fields that generated by muscle fibers. And um, if we can do this one, so because of the some limitations that EMG has, I will just put the EMG, um, sorry, I'm just, maybe is next slide. So I will, I will explain there. So the current, uh, the current technologies like EMG, electromyography, they are suffering from some, um, they are suffering from some, uh, you know, disadvantage. So one of them is a spatial resolution. So they are trying to use EMG and inject them in the muscle. However, the, um, the, EMG electrodes must, must to be um, actually uh, implanted in the muscle itself. So there are a lot of risk of the infection in addition to uh, you know, the very low spatial resolutions that we have. So that's why this, will, this is the great opportunity for magnetic sensors to, um, you know, to be tailored for the detection of the magnetic field from muscle. So about the TMR, how it works, as I said, they are, uh, they are clear, uh, three layers. So most of you knows how it works very, uh, very uh, much better than us. So um, it is actually, oh, sorry, this was, doesn't work well. So um, it is three layers and we have a pin layer, we have a free layer and they are, uh, the, the resistance is changing based on the direction of the, uh, the external magnetic field that has. So this was the slide I wanted to explain about the, the, the uh, what is the benefit of the MMG sensors compared to EMG sensors. So as I said, MMG sensors, there is no direct contact with the muscle, it, 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 you know, no needed, but also, uh, but however, EMG needs to, needs a, direct contact. So that's why we collaborate with INL. So um, for for uh, we are using their uh, TMR, uh, TMR based sensors for the detection of the, uh, uh, the magnetic fields. So this is the uh, technology that we are, uh, you know, we, we want to use. So I, I just show you, uh, um, you know, some of the, uh, actually results that we have. So this is uh, about the TMR sensors again. Um, the pictures that comes from the, uh, the uh, my students Siming and Asfand. So they are working on this. In fact, Asfand is currently uh, is in Portugal in INL. So for those that they don't know, so 
um, we hopefully uh, optimize the such sensors for the uh, specifically for the uh, these applications. Um, in fact, uh, this is not only using the sensors or adding the uh, adding the, for example, circuits electronics. So developing such technology needs a very, very basic uh, a study of the uh, simulations and how this magnetic field is uh, um, actually can be generated. So we have done um, a very basic simulation. So this is the some of the simulations on the how we can detect the uh, action potential propagations and how they can generate the magnetic field and in which directions. So they are, uh, this is very important to understand the, uh, the basics of the magnetic field based uh, on the, you know, uh, the muscle uh, fibers, uh, uh, muscle fibers biology, let's say. So this is the is a, is a, is a very important. So that's why uh, that's why um, we have done many simulations, uh, specifically in a uh, in a com using Comsol and MATLAB. So these are, uh, for example, uh, the some uh, other simulations. So we can see the distance is plays a lot of uh, you know uh, distance of the, uh, for example, sensors on the surface. For, uh, with the with the muscle fibers, so they they need to be considered in the our calculations, and um, of course the the biomagnetic field around the muscles and which area and what is the strength, so they need to all um, they have to be considered. So here shows the some of the simulations. So mainly uh, using the console uh, console multiphysics. Uh, so you can uh, what we can see that you know the uh, the millivol uh, the action potential voltage or magnetic field or uh, the uh, magnetic field on the different you know place of the uh, muscle so it depends on the uh, the fi the muscle fiber where the uh, is positioned you know we we need to consider these uh, parameters in our um, in our uh, actually implementation so um, this is the for the for the validation for the validation of the uh, such works we need to actually so in collaboration with the University of Edinburgh um, actually this is the works that still is ongoing so we are trying to uh, actually uh, using the nerve stimulations we uh, you know we uh, we will have uh, the uh, amplifier head at the stage and for, for you know the making the contraction motions and then you know uh, the measuring the uh, measuring the uh, the muscle magnetic fields that is generated by by stimulations and here is the is the vision of the uh, implementation that we want to implant in the in the rat so this was the uh, we we used the uh, TMR sensors uh, in in this technology. However, also we are uh, um, in collaborations with the uh, Fraunhofer in Germany. We uh, have used their uh, magnetoelectric sensors. So uh, magnetoelectric sensors, in fact, they are the difference. Are uh, they are a, a magnetoestrictive layer? that uh, is, uh, it, it has a, in fact, this magnetoestrictive uh, layer. So they have a, uh, uh, the, the effect of the mechanical on the magnetic field. And also we use the piezoelectric, which is converting the electric to uh, mechanical. So in fact, using these two layers that if we have a magnetoestrictive and piezoelectric, we can have a, um, uh, we can have a uh, you know electric over magnetic field. So this is the uh, this mechanical coupling between the magnetoestrictive materials and piezoelectric materials that they can be uh, you know they can be shown as a um, 
you know, as a, as a sensing phenomena. So we can use it as a sensor. So here shows the uh, magnetoestrictive, uh, you know, uh, here layer. So piezoelectric here. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, polysilicon has been used for the substrate. So uh, such sensors, they are, um, in fact, has a, some uh, drawback and has a, some, um, you know, benefits compared to uh, other type of the sensors, for example, like TMR. So the figure here shows the work that uh, we published last year in, um, in transaction of the biomedical circuit and system. Um, as I said, they have some benefits, magnetoelectric sensors, they are passive sensors. They, uh, they have a very high sensitivity. So um, they have a small dimensions. Uh, room, uh, they work at the room temperature and they are extremely uh, low power because of the piezoelectric piezoelectricity uh, that, uh, for example, here is the aluminum nitride we have used for the uh, piezoelectric material. So um, they produce, uh, uh, you know, they 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 all uh, they they can produce the magnet uh, the electrical charge using the uh, mechanical force. So they uh, they are a very low power, but the sensitivity it's of course is less than uh, magnetoresistive sensors. So. Um, this is the uh, so in the, in this work actually uh, you can see the uh, the simulations so using the total displacement because of the generally magnetoelectrics you know they uh, they are depends on the magneto restrictions and piezoelectricity so this is the uh, uh, the simulation that has been has been done based on different parameters geometry operation more. Uh, then uh, material combination, thickness, length, and you know so on. So temperature, number of layers. So they are also important. So um, we have done in this paper, we shows that different type of the DC uh, sensitivity compared to the other works or resonance enhancement or AC uh, sensitivity. So this is the device, the fabricated device, um, as you can see. And um, so this was with the University of Kiel and Fraunhofer I ISIT in uh, Berlin. And this is the, our um, experimental uh, setup in, uh, in our school, in our lab, in fact. So we had a, uh, so one of the main issue, uh, of course, always is a, uh, is a, uh, uh, noise cancellations, how we, how we cancel noise. So we use the double, uh, so here is a double stain, stainless um, a steel tube. So we put the sensors inside of that. And then also uh, we had, a, um, as you can see here, so we had a cube that they are, is a magnetic, uh, is, a, is an active geomagnetic field cancellation box. So using that, uh, you know, these two actually, so this is the static and this is the active. So they we could uh, reduce the magnetic field, uh, the magnetic uh, noises significantly. So um, the next work that um, actually Asfand, uh, my, my PhD student know in INL, has done and published in the t -Biocast last year. So we have used for the, also we have used magnetic sensor for the other application. So we wanted to show the, uh, is not only implantable, but also we can use uh, this technology for the variable, for the variables. So the idea of uh, this, um, the idea of the, this um, uh, work, it was to, embedding the, uh, the magnet, small magnetic particles in the contact lens and then using the sensors that, you know, on the, on the glasses. So um, as you can see here, so we can, uh, we can monitor and follow the eye movement. So in that case, what uh, we using the classifications, we can use the uh, such technology for the different type of applications. So here is a video that um, Asfand prepared. So it shows the actually applications. 
I don't know if had a voice or no. So we, we show the application of this also for Tetris. And um, in fact, you know, it was the using the web camera, uh, you know, using the camera that, and one, uh, one eye model, so 3D printing eye model, we could monitor the human eye. So this is the TMR sensors that was placed on the tree uh, around the around the eye. So uh, just show you uh, this was the uh, this was the uh, the electronic interface. So uh, uh, again, this was the TMR sensors that has been uh, uh, fabricated by INL. Um, I saw Elvira also here. So Elvira uh, uh, was the who uh, behind the TMR sensors. So um, here uh, shows the structure of the sensors and then the, the electronics was including the amplifier. Uh, we used the fourth uh, order low pass filters and then, you know, the uh, couple of, uh, you know, buffer and uh, so we had a, we had an external DC offset adder and ADC a microcontroller that can send this one to a, a graphic interface actually. So um, this was this. Uh, also, uh, Asfand and Xiaoping also Xiaoping helping Asfand for the new work. So they are already. Uh, working on that. So not only on the contact lens, because contact lens has uh, some limitations to be tested in human. So it needs a lot of ethical uh, paperwork. So here is the work that actually they are working currently on that for the, you know, uh, putting the magnets on the eye eyelid. So that will be eyelid control. So this is, was the one of the uh, very pr uh, primary work that um, Asfand and Xiaoping, they did to control the, uh, actually the Asfand to go to the, reach the point. So this was the one of the very basic work. Okay, so that was all uh, my talk. Sorry, uh, I, I talk a lot. Uh, I'm just uh, giving a couple of slides about the other project, what we are doing in MeLab in Glasgow. So uh, we uh, uh, we are part of Hermes project is a is a uh, pan European um, uh, project to develop the uh, implantable uh, technologies for the uh, brain neurological disorder uh, and we are we uh, we are planning to combine these technologies so this is the one of the directions that we. Um, you know, we aim to do to implanting the magnetic sensors for the, uh, for example, for the uh, the brain recording or even the implantable brain recording or even, uh, you know, stimulations. And also we are working on the energy harvesting, so different type of uh, uh, implantable energy harvesting. Uh, so this is the couple of works that we are working on the solar, on the uh, near field and far field um, uh, electromagnetic type of the uh, uh, power delivery. So uh, I would like to acknowledge the my groups. So of course, uh, uh, also thankful to uh, generous helps of the support of the uh, funders here. So this is uh, not possible without the uh, all of the um, supports that we received from them. So before I uh, conclude, I would like also uh, give an announcement. We will have a very interesting Spintronic event on 11 March. So uh, that we have a uh, we have a uh, nice uh, lineup of the speakers, including Susanna. So uh, is is our pleasure to having her. So uh, keep in touch and stay tuned about the. Uh, this event. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to take any question. Hey, thank you very much, Hadi, for this very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation. I will now open uh, the session for questions. Um, you can either uh, write the questions and I will ask, or uh, if you want, uh, please uh, raise your hand or directly uh, uh, put the question to Hadi. So I will give three seconds, otherwise, 
I will start. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, my turn. Uh, so it, I, I, I have. A, oh wait, Philip is here. I will just uh, give the the floor to Philip, and then I will leave mine for next. Philip, you can go and talk if you want. Very nice Hi. to have you here. Can, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you well. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Hadi. Thank you. No, you are muted now. Yeah, we cannot hear you. <laughs> now he's on the other side of the world, so it's normal. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that's sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I have a question uh, regarding the uh, magnetomyography mm -hmm. um, project. Um, you, uh, your design of the, the sensing device. Uh, I actually have two questions. First, the design of the of the sensing device uh, is integrated on a CMOS chip, and the second question is that uh, is this device this device needs to be implanted inside uh, the, um, the body or at, a, at some level we will be sensitive enough to, to have it just at the level of the skin. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank, thank you. you. If, actually, good question. So uh, the first question, um, no, it's not on the CMOS technology, but this is, is our plan to do it actually. Or maybe not. So this is, we, uh, we are some, you know, we have some, um, we are waiting some uh, feedback from the our uh, uh, our partners that they are uh, you know embedding this one. So we are trying to make a you know uh, sensors and uh, sensors and integrated readout circuit on the flexible substrate. So that's like an island flexible you know substrate. So that that can be you know. Um, attached to the muscle. So maybe this is the, what we, because what the, uh, the our actually uh, collaborators, they have a concern. So they don't have a concern about the, uh, the place because they say, oh, this is, we can, uh, we can have it around, you know, uh, for example, three in, in five millimeters. So we can put it there. So we don't have a, uh, you know, limitation for the size. But of course, in future, we would love to have integrated on the uh, on the monolithic integration. So the second question, um, actually, it was uh, related to the implantation or, uh, yeah. So for human, we, of course, we are not allowed to make it uh, implantable. But currently, we do some good results from the this muscle here. So this muscle that exactly by movement of the you know the these these two fingers, so we could uh, see some uh, some results. So yeah, this will be uh, amazing if we can see, uh, you know, by attaching on the uh, on the surface of the skin without implantation. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Philip. Thank you, Hadi. I will now uh, give the word to Sahil Sharma. So please go ahead and mute yourself and go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, hello, I uh, Sahil. Uh, thank first of all, thank you for very nice lecture. Thank so you. I have I have one question, sir. Uh, uh, you are talking about the magnetic sensors and the coil. So coil have some heating effect. So what about the heating effect? Actually, I could not find the heating effect uh, in these slides. And also, sir, one of question is power consumption of the coils and all this. <laughs> So actually, this kind of magnetic sensors, um, we don't have any coil. So um, this is, you know, the NMR for NMR we have. I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for the for the TMR sensors, we don't mm -hmm. have any actually um, any any temperature, and also uh, you know inside the TMR itself there are uh, some you know layers that they are a thermal resilience and they mm -hmm. are managing the, uh, the you know, um, the term, uh, actually thermal effects. So we don't have any actually a very particular, uh, you know, concern about the temperature actually. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you, Sahil. Mm -hmm. If you have any other question, you, you can uh, do it. Uh, so for now, there are no more raised hands, so I will I will go ahead. Um, I, I enjoyed a lot the, the last example that you showed with the glass that detect eye movement. Uh, so maybe I missed it, but it, can you detect the actual direction? So up, down, left, right, uh, uh, all of that. And exactly how you do that, because we know the sensors are sensitive to one direction of the field and you showed only one permanent magnet integrated in the, um, in the lens. So can, can you just uh, uh, give me an idea of how actually do you take advantage of all of this? Do you use a lot of sensors? How do you do it? Yeah, actually we use the three sensors. So I think in a movie was, here, uh, maybe the last one. So you see that this is the uh, the left, right, and top sensors. So we use the three uh, sensors, and this is the magnet. So in fact, by closing this one to here, so we could, uh, you know, uh, we could actually uh, differentiate between the different, actually, uh, the uh, directions of the eye eye movement. Let's say so to see where eye is going. So in, in glasses, you would have several sensors placed, for example, around uh, the, the part. Okay, okay, that uh, yeah. that's, is a very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I also have another not, question. Not the solution, but not the best solution, but <laughs> we have to. Well, trade-off, right? <laughs> uh, always like that. Um, uh, as actually, for the, the magnetoelectric uh, um, sensors also the the strategy that you showed i was very intrigued and you showed a, a nice picture with the integration on the pcv um so the, it, this is quite a different size so they are quite big and for integrated devices they can really uh, be a challenge exactly this uh, uh, this figure um and i, I was wondering yeah how because uh, they need to be um, suspended uh, if I, I understand well. So how do you integrate this very big chunk suspended with the, your piece of uh, electronics? Because the, the previous image uh, was, uh, it indicated that that was suspended in there. So uh, you mean uh, the suspension of that, correct? Yes, you yes. Thought. So this one actually, it was, uh, we, uh, you know, we have packaged this one. So, you know, this was all was in the package. So that's why, you know, it's, you know, it, it, we didn't have any effect on the, that one. So we, uh, this is the one actually solution to make it whole package, or uh, actually one of the things that we aim is to make that one stick to the, for example, the surface of the skin or surface of the muscle. So then we can, you know, uh, just uh, encapsulate uh, using the some polymers, for example. Okay, that could be very interesting. And my final question, because uh, then we are running out of time, we can stay a little bit to talk afterwards, but we have to finish at least the, the, the seminar. Um, <laughs> when you're saying, no, 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 just go. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I, I was very, it was very beautiful to see a whole Bach cylinder. I, I find that, that uh, very dear uh, to, to, to my heart. That is some technology that is uh, nowadays somewhat hidden. Um, so if I understood well here, um, you don't actually tag the uh, biological material. So you just use a very high magnetic field to do the detection. And uh, for that, you use this uh, Albach uh, technology. Veronica is already raising her hand. I see, I will give you word afterwards, just one minute. Um, and uh, I, I was uh, wondering, because it's all you wanted to, to move to a fully portable device, and this can be a really big uh, challenge. So are you able to, to give us some idea of uh, what are the routes you expect to follow in order to really miniaturize this uh, uh, very beautiful and traditional magnetic uh, uh, instrument? Yeah, actually, that's a that's a very good question. You know, because to be honest, the Holbach is a is very big, is very heavy, and and uh, expensive uh, actually. So uh, we, you know, for for making this, you know, we spend uh, some money. Um, um, 
so here uh, we we use the actually we need a very uh, you know how a uh, very high magnetic field. Otherwise, we have to use the uh, you know for example magnetic nanoparticles. Correct. So we don't want to we don't we want to be a label free because our aim is who knows maybe in future we can just put the hands inside the you know the hole and you know tell us you know, uh, you know is there any malaria or not okay so this is you know this is maybe happens we are not sure but uh, uh, but why why we choose this one actually we had a, we had a previous one if you remember for the for the nmr we used the one that it was generated half a so this one actually so we have this one so this one it is generated half a tesla so half a tesla was not enough uh, for the our current sensors, correct? So one idea for that one, we have to tailor the sensors to be a uh, you know sensitive enough with the for example half a Tesla, or even less. If we can make a sensors with to be uh, you know detect the this paramagnetics with the for example two hundred milli Tesla, so then we don't need this big you know, uh, magnetic sensors, correct? Or, you know, uh, so this is a one idea. Um, or even, you know, for example, maybe in future, we can just make a simple, you know, maybe a few, few tens of millitesla. So it depends on the sensitivity of, uh, yeah, of the sensors, to be honest. Okay, I understand. So you are going through the sensor and not really through the, the, gen the, the, the thing that generates the field. Okay. Very clever. So, Veronica, do you want to do your question? I'd yes, see you. Yes. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Hadi, for for this nice and intense presentation. So, uh, my question is regarding the Parasite project with Uganda. Mm -hmm. And my question here, maybe I, I was not paying attention, but <laughs> what I want to to ask you is how the parasites got paramagnetic or magnetic. How the, uh, how the particles got inside the parasite. Oh, that's a very good. Actually, we didn't know about that one also. So um, when, we, uh, when we discussed with the, with the clinicians in the, our uh, medical school, so uh, we were thinking about the, what, they, what they say, because if you, uh, what we, uh, what we um, actually presented in the, our previous work in the 2018, we use the only GMR for the uh, for the detection of the paramagnetic particle. So we didn't know at all about the malaria. But then one thing that they told us, so they said, look, when when a blood cell, you know, it becomes infected, so by malaria, so malaria itself, there is a there is a you know a paramagnetic uh, insight. So this is, is a so as you can see here, so mm -hmm. this is is a is a healthy. So this is the healthy mm -hmm. red blood. Mm -hmm. But this one, it's a infected red blood cell. So all of the all of the infected red blood cell by malaria, they have a small, a small, a small paramagnetic, you know, particle. Okay. So that is is a, is a, some particles is a, you know we call it hemozoin, which has a paramagnetic, you know, uh, aspects, let's say. There are many papers, actually, if you search for, I can send you even if you want. Yeah, uh, I knew, I knew about some magnetic yeah, bacteria, okay. but parasites, I haven't, uh, I haven't heard about it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, thank you, Veronica. So our students are very shy. I'm sure they have a lot of questions. So it's your turn now. Do you want to go? Come on, I will count to three. Marilia, Pedro, do you want to ask something? Otherwise, I can. Uh, who is talking? It's yeah. Beyond Vanya. Yeah, I, I can offer candy for the students who, <laughs> who do questions. Come on. Uh, Deborah, Marília, uh, Pedro Ribeiro, João Pereira, come on, one of you, one question. You don't want to know more. I will ask one on behalf of Marília. 
Uh, so in the in the beginning of your presentation, you showed a very interesting graphic about the the um, um, order of magnitude of fields from the human body. And this is not really a question; it's more of I would like to know your opinion and uh, your view on it, because as you said. Uh, optically pumped magnetometers, they are becoming extremely competitive in the, the area of detecting very, very low magnetic fields. Uh, they have the, handi uh, the handicap of, uh, you know, still not being so good as magnetic sensors for integration uh, with the CMOS reading. But what is your view on these competing technologies for the detection of very low magnetic fields, namely the optical uh, technology, the SURF technology, which is also very, very competitive. And of course, the TMR technology, that is the one you were talking about. Just a general overview. Uh, you know, OPM is an is a excellent technology. So it's a, it's a fantastic. So is a, uh, you know, they are, uh, no, they are actually, they are, uh, you know, getting a lot of attention because of the, you know, they could uh, bring this one to the quantum, uh, you know, and they, it, it got a lot of attention. Uh, but my personal opinion, so this is, I'm thinking, I'm thinking a technology will be successful if it is uh, simple. So um, I think, uh, you know, because OPM, it is using the laser as well as the, you know, you know, magnetics effect. So it's it's light and also the magnetism. So um, it we cannot probably go for the very very small. You know, to to be implantable or wearable or flexible. But what I could you know say, um, the future will be more for uh, magnetoresistive. So magnetoresistive is a is a future, I believe. So this is I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Thank you. I think we liked a lot your opinion and we'll keep it with us. I have a question. Oh, okay, Joel, João Pereira. I think it's João Pereira is talking, right, Joel? Yes. Okay. Uh, since the MTJs are flexible and they can be, they, they need to be inside the, in the, the muscles and the nerves, it and they are using here to only make to in uh, analysis and reading uh, the performance in the in the mass, in the nerves can also uh, they can also enhance the performance of the of the muscles because if we inject a, like a magnetic field uh, or electric pulse with the in the same way it can enhancement also uh, in, in what term they can enhance of what? In, in, now, uh, since the, uh, like me, uh, the, the muscle performance is proportional with the electric current that pass in the nerves, mm -hmm. correct? If, uh, is, if uh, reading the signal is using the electromagnetic field from the muscle itself, can the, the sensor work as a amplifier of the, the same current if you apply a external magnetic field into the muscle of the arm? Um, so if I, uh, so first of all, MTJ is not flexible. Okay, so sorry. Ah, that, no, ah okay. Yeah, so this is the, um, can be, so MTJs are very small and you know, a lot of uh, groups know they are working to make it flexible. I know Diana also has a project on that I saw this morning. So, um, but, uh, you know, MTJs, uh, they can be, they can read, they can measure the magnetic field, so they can sense it. So for actually for making any stimulations that you are mentioning, probably, we need a you know, uh, we need, uh, for example, some other technologies. For example, in one of the uh, one of the our idea for the, you know, brain uh, probes, we are trying to use the magnet. The you know, for example, we want to use the magnetoresistive sensor, and next to the next to that, some microcoil. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. this is a bit, uh, so that microcoil that generates some magnetic, uh, some, uh, for example, magnetic field to stimulation. Okay, so, but again, will be a, bit, a lot of risk of the, one of the question about thermal. So that is, is, a, is a very dangerous for the thermal effect. So we need to, I don't know actually about the, if they can stimuli, I don't think so. So this will be only for reading, you know, we can, we can use. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I will uh, start the, the closure of the session. Although if you have a last minute question, please feel free to do it. Nevertheless, we will finish here the formal part of the seminar. And if you want to stick a, a little bit more around for more informal questions, please do. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Thank you, Hadi, for being here with, with thank us you, and for, for your time. And uh, let's look forward for collaboration. So see you all next time. Yeah. Just before you go, to, yeah. re to remind you that we will have our next um, our next uh, presenter, uh, Nines Kaman PhD student, next February at 4, again in Zoom, as always. And see you in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you.